So here we are, this is the official last video of 2023. We're gonna change things up. This is still gonna be a solo overnighter. I'm gonna make an item here, hopefully, if it works out. I'm a bit rusty. And then we'll take it out to the woods and use it. Um, but I'm doing this differently for two reasons. One, because I need to break this thing in, because I just got it, and get it going, because I promised you guys metalworking videos in 2024, in addition to other content. And also because it's the holiday season, and YouTube does the annual throttle down, which means less than half a percent is gonna be even notified, and those that are, chances are you're busy, you're out, you're not gonna see it for three to five days, or be notified in three to five days. And by then, it doesn't matter. So, instead of wasting your guys' time, I'm going to do something different, and hopefully you like it, and we can do more of it. So on that note, let's get started. So what you're looking at right here is one half of a flask. It's two pieces that go together. One sits on top of the other one and you make your mold for your liquid metal or bronze or aluminum to be cast or poured inside. Here's the foundry right here. This is a graphite crucible or a cup. We have gas flames gonna come out and go around here. It's gonna meet this one and go around in a circular fashion like this. Heat this bad boy up to 2000 degrees and melt my copper and create bronze. So on any type of casting, about 90% of them, you have to have an item to make an item. And someone's gonna say, well, you gotta have that, there's no point. Well, there's a lot of points because you can make multiples of that item or different versions of that item. And you could do something as simple as carve a knife blank out of wood, do this process, now you have a bronze or a copper or an aluminum or in some cases a steel blank that you can actually use to make a knife or an ax head, arrowheads, things like that. The other option would be to have soapstone and get two halves and carve into the rock, put the two halves together, tie them up with a leather strap like they did back in the Bronze Age, and then pour into it. In that case, you just carve and no item is needed. So here, what I would like to do is take a cast iron skillet and create a copper or bronze one that we can cook off of in the woods. The problem today is I have my flask this is one half. It's only about two and a half inches wide. Another one on top gives me five inches or four and a half, somewhere in there. And I'm concerned there's not gonna be enough clay at the bottom of it to be packed tight enough so when I lift it, it doesn't just fall right through. So trial and error. Um, I did this about seven years ago, but I used actual two by fours on top of each other and we were looking at probably about seven or eight inch thickness and it worked perfectly. So I'm gonna roll with what I got. If this fails, we'll shift gears into something else. So this white material here is ceramic, it's not fiberglass, and the color of that cup that you saw in there, that nice orange color, that's the right temperature to melt copper. Copper melts around 1900 degrees Fahrenheit, and aluminum around 1250. That's why you could actually melt aluminum cans in a fire pit or a fireplace, and in some cases copper as well. Um, I'm happy with this. It looks good. I don't smell any gas or anything, so hopefully it'll all work out. So the first thing we want to do here is just place this in there to where it fits. Diagonal like that would be good. And then you want to go ahead and give a good coat of powder so that the clay won't stick to the cardboard or the ground or the table or wherever you choose to do this at. You also want to stick it on the pan itself so that you can remove the pan once you flip this over. And that should be good.
Now the real trick is going to be making sure that, like I said, it's compacted hard enough to where we have enough coverage on the top portion here. Now we're going to use a sawing motion. And get this excess off of here. So that when you flip it over, it will land flat. And we'll do all the fine tuning with this yardstick metal ruler. Now it's time for the real moment of truth. It's like Indiana Jones. Okay, now there's issues right here, okay? But, but, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna repowder this, put this back in there, and when we pack around it, it should fill these in. So the fact that that even worked, I'm happy. So this looks good, and the point of these two pieces of copper is I'm going to remove them, it creates holes. I'm going to pour the molten copper or bronze, whichever one we decide to go with, into one of these holes. The gas is going to pull and draw the copper or bronze up through the entire mold and then up into this hole right here. If you only have an entry hole, it's going to pour so far and stop. But to complete the entire mold on a large project like this, you want at least two vent holes. One here and one here. So I can pour here and it will travel, or I can pour here it will travel that way. Whichever one, they're universal. Just make sure you have a minimum of two. In some cases, for large projects, you want like three or four. But two is good right here. Okay, so far so good. Balance that right there. I'm not going to move. Now I got to get this pan out of here. And there's the pan. So where the copper piping was at for the tube, for the air holes, all I did was dig it out a little bit and pack it down. We're going to probably pour in right here, let it travel through, and have the gas escape up this tube right here.
All right, so we're gonna take a few pieces of tin and we're gonna add it to our copper and create bronze. If you don't have tin, you can substitute pewter. Now that's what we're looking for right there. That tells me that it traveled from this hole all the way through this mold into that hole right there. So we're gonna wait for it to cool down and hopefully to be outstanding AF. And there she is. There's a lot of cleanup to do. I mean, a lot of cleanup, but it worked out well. And there you go, not perfect, but doable. And that process that we just did is viable for something like this. Now, the one thing with bronze is it's almost as heavy as steel. So this thing is heavy. Nothing you want to backpack around with, but I mean, if you have a car, you car camp or throw it in the RV, it'd be something to keep and pass down. It could be an heirloom item. The one thing we want to do in the modern era is get tin, the same tin that I put into the copper to make bronze. We want to tin the inside of this because through science and medicine, we found that long-term exposure to metals like bronze and brass and copper causes issues even aluminum um, but back in the day they didn't know that some of them may have done that just on their own but the average joe didn't have that option so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and use this bad boy and then we'll save the tinning for a different video so with that after i want to say five and a half to six hours i'm hungry let's get her done
And now for the real moment of truth. Right. That's the easy way out. Look at that yolk. Got steam coming off that bad boy. Mmm. Mm-mm. Catch you all in a few. The microphone died, so my shop is right off the road, so you're going to hear cars and planes and people and dogs and everything, and the kitchen sink, and there's nothing I can do about it. So, like we talked about here, it's long-term exposure to metals that's going to cause a problem. Using it once isn't going to be an issue. I want to save the tinning portion for later on, and we're going to go ahead and tin this because that will allow us to do future projects like bush pots, things like that. Last week we went ahead and started a charity. It was Corporal's Corner Wounded Warrior Project Charity. I wanted to raise $5,000. I kicked it off with $1,000 and I believe 1,700 people and change donated and it boosted it all the way to $50,000. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that bad boy down. That way they can get their money and I appreciate that. The one thing that irks me the most is seeing people around the holiday season making videos talking about how good they are, how good they think they are when there's people who are less fortunate. And I wanted to come through, I wanted you guys to come through and help people who actually put their lives on the line for people like us. And um, it's appreciated. Really do appreciate that. Um, it meant a lot to me and I'm sure it's going to mean a lot to them. And being that it worked out this well, we'll find something in the future and we'll do it again. Alright, send this bad boy off. With that, when we hear my videos, can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. As always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, and I'm going to catch you.